Oh my god, I'm so hot. I think Brian better be careful because I might not. Oh my god, I'm so hot, so hot, so hot, so hot. Hey, good morning everybody. Welcome to the vlog. I hope the start of your day is absolutely incredible. Today is going to be absolutely amazing. We are heading on the road to a place that I have always wanted to visit, a Mayan ruin called Chichen Itza, which was the capital of the Mayans. It is going to be crazy. Myself and Laura are heading out. We're going to meet up with some people and it's a two and a half hour drive. So we're going to see a little bit of the countryside and then see this amazing place. And I hope that you guys will enjoy this journey as well. Go ahead in the comments and let me know if you've ever wanted to visit a place like this and what place it is because I love reading about you guys. While you're down there, can you smash that like button for me? We are off to meet up with our tour group and we are going to head on this two and a half hour drive. I tell you what, this is like a dream come true. I am so excited. You guys know that I'm typically interested in animal stuff, but this is something that I've always really been excited about. So let's just get going and have a great time. All right, so we're about two hours into the two and a half hour drive. This is kind of a a scheduled stop at a little souvenir shop. I am super excited to be a half an hour away. I just saw the very first sign saying it's that way, so it's really cool. Let's go inside and see. I guess there's a bunch of really cool souvenirs and uh, we're not far away from the destination. All right, so this place has some amazing things and I mean, take a look at some of this stuff. It is so freaking cool. I mean, that is awesome. But I will tell you this, uh, it definitely is a tourist trap because Mexico is pretty cheap when it comes to things. Uh, this is not cheap at all. I mean, just little things like this here would be about 50 US dollars, which is just ridiculous. <laughs> I always say you just gotta adventure out because you just never know what you're gonna experience and a lot of people I think make mistakes when they go on vacations they kind of just stay in one area they stay on the resort but really you gotta get out and see the real place right and, and even though we're going to a, a heavily touristy place I think there's about two million people per year visit this particular Mayan ruin the fact is is that we're able to see kind of places like this along the way and the environment I mean it's so cool and this I think isn't a ancient Mayan ruin Laura, are you impressed with the, the, the ruins? It's everything I hoped for and a little bit more. Look at how amazing it is. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Blows my mind. <laughs> when you think of Mayan ruins, certainly you think of this pyramid in particular. You see so much of it, so this is pretty exciting to be walking up on it. Inside over here is, well... I tell you what, man. <laughs> It's just, I'm kind of in awe right now. I mean, it's it's crazy. Again, I've been kind of fascinated with this culture for really most of my life. And to finally be here is just crazy. I mean, just take a look at this. This is so freaking impressive. And we're going to spend the next three or four hours kind of walking around, not only seeing this, which is probably the most iconic of the structures here, but there's so much more to it. And uh, again, you know, to be totally honest with you, typically when I go exploring, I don't want to go to the most touristy place, but I didn't have any connections down here. Uh, ironically enough, our guide, who is really great, said the next time I come down, he'll take me to some Mayan ruins that are like off the beaten path that no one goes to where we can climb up them and do all that stuff. So uh, we're doing the kind of most touristy thing on this trip but uh, in the future we're gonna come back and we're gonna do some amazing things but hey there's a lot to see here uh, and this is pretty awesome. The ruins here at Chichen Itza are actually not as old as I really originally thought. They're really built in the 1100s all the way to like the 1500s so these guys aren't like thousands and thousands of years old but we are heading into a slightly older part of the development here. It's about 400 years younger than these developments here but uh, uh, still really cool just again to think of like the tradition and uh, and. For you guys that don't know, I'm kind of an ancient aliens buff, and there's a lot of kind of <laughs> alien type of stuff that people talk about in this particular site. So I think it's really cool. And I'm just fascinated by the Mayan culture. I mean, what a crazy thing. With you know, they were so advanced for early culture. I mean, you know, obviously the Mayan calendar and so many of the things, the medicinal things that they came up with. Uh, it's just really cool to be here. And I realize I'm not doing animals today, but venturing out to these type of things are absolutely amazing. And Already I've learned so much and we're just starting this tour. Again, I've been fascinated with the Mayan culture forever. So getting an opportunity to learn all of this stuff is truly incredible. Look at the little spiny tail iguana just hanging out in the distance there. Uh, it seems like they like this, uh, this construction. 
All right, guys, so we just spent the last two and a half hours on basically a guided tour. Uh, learned a tremendous amount about this entire complex here and the city. So I figure we're going to take you back to the beginning, the oldest part of Chichen Itzu, and uh, just see if we can recite what we learned and teach you guys. And you guys can probably laugh at us when we mess it up. Okay, let's get started with one of the older parts of Chichen Itza, which is uh, this temple here. And this would actually still be considered a pyramid, even though it's square, because back then they actually built them square. And Lori, let's uh, let's go over a couple quick things. How large was Chichen Itza? The whole. The whole thing. The whole thing was, I believe, um, 2,800 meters. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was about 80 square kilometers. And how many people inhabited this area? Um, I think that was a total of 3,800. 3,800. Okay, it was 200 to 300,000 people. And what's interesting about these is that this pyramid actually would be passed on generation to generation and continue to be built. So what you see behind us is maybe several generations may have started small, and each generation they would build onto it and continue to make it larger and larger. Now, all of the pyramids here are actually burial grounds for the governors of the area. Okay, for a little side note here, what you see behind me, these pillars, those were where the parents disciplined the bad children. They would have to sit there, uh, depending how bad they were. Sometimes it was 15 minutes, sometimes it was an hour, but these are what they call the timeout poles. <laughs> <laughs> And by the way, that was uh, false information from Lori, but... <laughs> <laughs> Seriously? <laughs> <laughs> but you can see right here, see right where these uh, this intersection is, where one of the bricks goes this way, the other one goes that way? That's just kind of an idea of what it is, how it was an expansion. At, at one point, the pyramid was here, and then they added on this section, in that section, and so on like that. So, what you see behind me is a giant hole in the side of this pyramid and this is thanks to Americans. The American known as Mr. Thompson, mm, I can't remember who the hell he was, but he was some kind of explorer that had permission to basically blow sh up and try to see what's inside of it. So thank you Mr. Thompson for being able to see inside this beautiful pyramid. And by the way, that was absolutely factual. The only thing that she left out was the fact that he actually owned the property until the late 1800s. Although he didn't own the ruins, he owned the property, but the Mexican government gave him permission to explore all of the ruins, and he actually blew them up trying to look for gold. So what you see behind us right there is actually an observatory. You can see that it's circular, and it's one of the very few, if not only, structures in Mayan culture that is round and not square or rectangle. And do you have any idea what they observed when they went up there? Well, let me tell you. The high priest would go into the holes and look out, and he would observe which people he wanted to sacrifice. That is how what? they chose who got sacrificed. That is not true. That's what I heard. <laughs> They're observing the sun for the days of the calendar. I feel like my story was they much did not they did not they did not pick <laughs> sacrifices from the observatory. Listen, if I was the governor, that's how I would have used it. <laughs> okay. Well, they really did observe the sun because the days of the calendar were super important, so they knew when they could harvest their crops uh, or maybe or sacrifices. or sacrifices. They needed sacrifices too. They did. Now we're getting to the area where the pyramids are actually changing to where they look more like pyramids. Also, the other temples and pyramids only had one staircase, whereas these have staircases on each side, as well as you can see on the bottom there, they're actually snake heads. This is the first time that we're starting to see that. So this is just different influences from different parts of Mexico. Yes, this actually is one of Brian's former ancestors pyramids, hence the snakes. Yes, yes, that's this, his name was Jesus. No, I shouldn't say that. It's also cool that we're seeing all these spiny tail iguanas all over the place. They definitely love these ruins. And one thing to note is that you notice on these temples that the snakes are all coming down and the heads are here. Uh, we'll show you something a little bit of snakes going up and what that means. Okay, and of course in the back is really kind of the most famous of the pyramids from this particular ruins. I don't really recall exactly the significance other than it must have been a pretty massive governor that built such a huge pyramid. Do you remember anything about this? I think that this was from the De Jesus line of Mayans and he was the last and most fierce of the governors. Um, he used 
those observatories. Yes, he he used the observatory a lot to pick out a lot of sacrificial people, which because the two sacrifice things are on either side of this pyramid, because that that's true. how that's how many he did. I think he was the one who did the most in ever. In the ever. Whole, the, <laughs> don't use that. <laughs> he was. <laughs> <laughs> he was the governor that did the most sacrifices in the whole history of the Mayan existence. There you go, was kids. De Jesus. There you go, kids. On History Day, you heard it here first. But on a serious note, you can notice at the top of all the pyramids, there's an, a, kind of a, a temple. And that's the only place that is actually where people would go up the stairs and go into the temple for worship. Uh, the rest of it was just a burial ground, so there's no actual rooms inside. And the actual people lived outside of the holy grounds. Mine were noted for being such amazing scholars of basically the stars, time, dates. And what's interesting is that this pyramid here was actually built on what they call a cenote, which is a big sinkhole that's filled up with water. There's one in the north, the east, the west, and the south in this complex. That's not what it's called. They're called cervezas. Oh, they're called cervezas. Yes. Dos cervezas. <laughs> so this building behind me right now is one of the most famous of these ancient Mayans. It was actually known as the canoe racing forum. What they did and they were known for was making these giant canoes out of these trees that you see all around me. Except those, these trees here are babies. These ones get huge, like 300 feet tall and stuff. So they would chop these down, make these huge canoes, and then they would have races between all these pillars. And basically, whoever got to the end first was the winner and all the losers you can guess they were sacrificed. Like I mentioned before about the snakes that were going down the stairs, they positioned the main pyramid, which is basically the center of the city, to where during the solstice, as the hours of the day went down, the snake would actually look like it was actually moving downward. That was basically a sign saying that the snake would bring prosperity, potentially rain, and just a good harvest. In the distance here, we see that the snakes are going up, so let's go take a look at that. Okay, so behind me you'll see one of two sacrificial altars they have here on the premises where we are today. And one of the neat things about these is, Brian had told you about those snake heads that were on the bottom of pyramids. Well, on these, you can see the snake heads are on the top. And the reason that they were on the bottom on the other ones is because they thought the good energy would run down from heaven to the people. Well, for this, they have them at the top because again, you're doing sacrifices. So guess what? There's four things. What they would do is they would put a body at each of the bottom corners here. They do the sacrifice, and if the gods like it, the blood would run up into the snake's mouth up to the top. And you can see that there was a lot of really good sacrifices because the dirt here is even red from the really good sacrifices. So this is a very rich, fertile, sacrificial ground. It's very spiritual, and I think Brian better be careful because I might offer him up. And lastly, we're at the ball court, which is the largest one that's found in the Mayan culture. There's actually 2,500 courts actually were found, but this one is by far the largest. And uh, I guess they played seven on seven, and then what happened to the losers? You know what happened to the losers. Sacrificed. Yes. That's right. This is definitely a game that you wanted to win because if you lost, you lost your life. But regardless, I don't really know how the game was played, but I guess it was played by with an eight pound rubber ball and a bunch of warriors. And the Mayans were pretty, they're pretty crazy. All right, so we're about to get out of here. This was really cool. I mean, I tell you what, it's uh, it was a little bit more touristy than what I really like, but at the same time, it's just really cool. And we definitely learned a lot about the Mayan culture. How'd you, what'd you think? I think that it was de definitely interesting, the buildings were beautiful, but I'm very glad I did not live back in those days. Because you would have got sacrificed. No, uh, I, actually I think I would have been a pretty good governor. <laughs> <laughs> Alright guys, so this is our last night in Mexico and Lori and myself are dressed up and we're heading out to a restaurant. I hope that you guys enjoyed the trip to Chichen Itza because it was absolutely amazing. For me, it was one of the highlights of the trip. I just think it's really cool to learn so much about an ancient culture and I hope that you guys learned a little bit and had a little bit of fun as well. Thank you so much for joining me on this journey. We are back home tomorrow and we are back to the comforts of BHB for a while. So I hope you guys will join us for the comforts.
filming adventures. Thank you so much for your support. You guys mean the world to me and I love you so much. Can you do me a couple favors before we get out of here? Can you smash that like button as well as turn that post notification on so you know when I upload a video, which is every day, seven days a week at nine o'clock in the morning, Eastern Standard Time. Remember to be kind to somebody and I promise I'll see you guys tomorrow traveling back home. Oh,